All right, folks, we are back here on Issues and Answers Friday. My Country with Scott Cannon. It is 642 in the p.m. on February the 2nd, 2024. The future is indeed here. We just got done talking about the military industrial complex and how it ropes black people into a system that doesn't even give a dog on about us. Now it's time to talk about the other industrial complex that ropes in black people and exploits black people and doesn't give a damn about us. The prison industrial complex. Yes. <clears throat> Reason why this is coming up is that our friends over at the Associated Press have done a uh, a sweeping two-year investigation and found that many goods linked to American prisoners have wound up in the supply chains of a dizzying array of products from Frosted Flakes cereal and ballpark hot dogs to gold medal flour and Coca-Cola. They are on shelves of most supermarkets, including Kroger, Target, Aldi, and Whole Foods. Uh, here are some of the takeaways from the Associated Press in investigation. Obviously, black people are primary, are disproportionately affected. Since the U.S. has a long history of locking up more people than any other country in the world, currently at about 2 million people. <clears throat> and the goods tied to prison labor have morphed into a massive multi-billion dollar empire, extending far beyond the classic images of people stamping license plates or working on road crews. The prisoners who help produce these goods are disproportionately people of color, and I'm doing the quotation because that means black. Some of those people are sentenced to hard labor and forced to work or they face punishment and sometimes are paid pennies an hour. Notice I just said pennies an hour or nothing at all. You know, there's a word for when you're forced to work but don't make any money. What is that called? I forgot. Man. This is so embarrassing during Black History Month. I forgot what it is called when you're forced to work. What is that called when you're forced to work for free? Good Lord, I can't remember. It's called slavery. That's right. It's slavery. A lot of these people are excluded from protections guaranteed to almost all other full-time workers, even when they are serious in, seriously injured or killed on the job. And it can almost be impossible for them to sue. And guess what, folks? All of this is legal, completely legal. Now, how did we get to this place? Well, just like everything else in this country, it just about, it goes back to slavery, actual slavery, slavery, slavery. The South struggled to rebuild its economy after the Civil War. So when in 1865, the 13th Amendment to the, the Constitution outlawed slavery and involuntary labor, except as punishment for a crime. Yes. Yes. And so at this point, the white Confederates who, you know, at, at that point were Democrats and now call themselves Republicans, mostly um, they started about bringing about the black codes, which criminalized virtually every facet of black life. 
That way, they could have black people arrested constantly and force them to work for free again. Ah, you see how this works. Now, that clause is being challenged on the federal level and efforts to remove similar language from state constitutions are expected to reach the ballot in about a dozen states this year. Now, there is a wide range of businesses that benefit from prison labor. You'd be surprised at just how many different companies benefit from forcing people to work for basically nothing. The Associated Press sought information from all 50 states through public records request and increase to corrections departments linking hundreds of millions of dollars worth of transactions to agriculture-based prison labor in state and federal facilities over the past six years. Those figures include everything from people leased out to work at private businesses to farmed goods and livestock sold on the open market. Many of these goods came from large operations in the South. Man, what happened in the South? Anybody know what happened in the South? Good Lord. This is just so embarrassing, I keep forgetting things, and it's Black History Month, and I'm just so embarrassed about this. Slavery. Slavery happened in the South. I mean, it happened in the North a little bit, too, but, you know, the South is like the motherland of slavery in this country. But in spite of the fact that many of these goods come from large operations in the South, almost every state has some form of prison agricultural program or slavery. <clears throat> Reporters also found prison labor in the supply chains of, listen to this, McDonald's, Walmart, Costco, and in the supply chains of goods being shipped all over the world via multinational companies, including to countries that have been slapped with import bans by Washington in recent years for using prison and forced labor themselves. Like, seriously. Oh, you're lying. You're lying. What makes you lie? No, I'm not lying. I swear. That's true. Now, these people will go on and on about the Uyghur Muslims in China. You can't beat the corporate media and our politicians and, and the people at the State Department talking about, oh, my God, the Uyghur Muslims. Oh, my God, the Uyghurs. Oh, Lord, the Uyghurs. They're, those poor Uyghurs. China's using them as slave labor and putting them in prison camps. Meanwhile, you got people like Kamala Harris keeping people in prison after they're supposed to be out of prison because they need the slave labor. Could you imagine how the media would present this if it was happening in Russia? Could you imagine that? That's why I do this show, folks, because I know a lot of you watch MSNBC and CNN and Fox and all the corporate media. You know, I'm here to give you a dose of reality. The way the media reports things about other countries versus how they report things about this country. Is, not, is completely night and day. If they had forced prison labor work clamps, when, when they, should I say, when they have forced prison labor work clamps, because they do have them in China, in Russia. Our government, our media, make sure they tell you every single detail of how horrible it is. Meanwhile, you've had the United Nations and Amnesty International and countless organizations talk about how horrible American prisons are and how just America's uh, prison system is. 
especially in how it treats black people. And you people still vote for it. Well, hey. Now, a lot of people used to think that prisoners just made license plates and did road work or something. That is not the case. It is a wide range of jobs. Almost all the country's state and federal adult prisons have some sort of work programs employing about 800,000 people. Wow. 800,000 people. That is according to a report from two years ago from the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union. The vast majority of these jobs are tied to tasks like maintaining prisons, laundry, or kitchen work. Some prisoners also work for states and municipalities, doing everything from cleaning up after hurricanes and tornadoes to picking up trash along highways. But they are also contracted out to private companies either directly from their prisons or through work release programs. They're often hired in industries with severe labor shortages, doing some of the country's dirtiest and most dangerous jobs like working in poultry plants, meat processing centers, and sawmills. The AP found that prisoners with just a few months or years left on their sentences work at private companies all over the country. And unlike work uh, crews picking up litter in orange jumpsuits, they go largely unnoticed, often wearing the same uniforms as their civilian counterparts. So you might be working side by side with like, uh, you know, with, with the guy who just stabbed a few people a few years ago. I mean, I remember personally, I used to work at a car wash here in the city of Gary on 12 and 20. <laughs> And my boss, like my mother would come pick me up from work sometime. I was like 18 years old at the time, 18 or 19 years old. My boss would uh, come around and he talked to the different customers and he talked to my mother, whatever, when, uh, whenever she'd come and pick me up. And I remember him telling my mother to be careful about walking around the car wash because a lot of the people that worked at our car wash were sex offenders and people who had been in prison and that he could tell that I was a good kid and did not come from that type of lifestyle, which he was correct about. Um, and so, yeah, I, I kind of got used to, if you go, if you're working in labor in any capacity, you're going to work with some, uh, ex convicts. I worked with some white supremacists over the years with like the tattoos and stuff, the Hitler, the neo-Nazi tattoos, 1488 and all that stuff. You know what that, that means. I mean, um, it, it's just a situation that, uh, that that's going to happen. But, you know, in this case, you're going to be, you might be working with somebody who's literally a prisoner, literally in prison. Incarcerated people also have been contracted to companies with that partner with prisons. In Idaho, they sorted and packed the state's famous potatoes, love Idaho potatoes, which are exported and sold to companies nationwide. In Kansas, they're employed by Russell Stover Chocolates. Ooh, love Russell Stover Chocolates, not gonna lie. And Cal Maine Foods, the country's largest egg producer. The company has since stopped in recent years. They were hired in Arizona by Taylor Farms, which sells salad kits in many of the major grocery stores nationwide and supplies popular fast food chains like Chipotle Mexican Grill. Now, what do these companies have to say about their use of slave labor or their benefiting from the usage of slave labor? 
While prison labor seeps into the supply chain of some of the companies through third-party suppliers without them knowing, others buy direct. Mammoth commodity tra traders that are essential to feeding the globe like Cargill, Bungie, Louis Dreyfus, Archer Daniels Midland, or ADM, and Consolidated Grain and Barge have been scooping up millions of dollars worth of soy, corn, and wheat straight from prison farms. The AP reached out for comment to these companies. It identified as having connections to the prison labor, but most did not respond. Of course not, because they are cowards. Cargill acknowledged buying goods from prison farms in Tennessee, Arkansas, and Ohio, saying they were con constituted only a small fraction of the company's overall volume. That's what they make their mouth say. It added that we are now in the process of determining the appropriate remedial action. And I've determined what they're going to say. Um, nothing. There will be no, no action. <laughs> McDonald's has said that it would investigate. I got the quotes up. Investigate any links to such labor and ADM and General Mills, which produce gold metal flour, pointed out that to their policies in place restricting suppliers from using forced labor. Whole Foods responded flatly, Whole Foods market does not allow the use of prison labor in products sold at our stores. Sure, buddy. Sure. Bungie confirmed that it had purchased grain from Corrections Department, but said it sold the facility sourcing from them in 2021, so they are no longer part of Bungie's footprint. Now, what do the prisons have to say? Corrections officials and other proponents note that not all work is forced and that prison jobs save taxpayers money. They also say workers are learning skills that can be used when they're released and given a sense of purpose, like working for free, which could help ward off repeat offenses. In some cases, labor can mean time shaved off a sentence and the jobs provide a way to repay a debt to society, they say. Now, while most critics don't believe all jobs should be eliminated, they say incarcerated people should be paid fairly, treated humanely, and all work should be voluntary. And so, I mean, it's funny how many times, and I swear I don't often do this, I don't do this on purpose. But it's amazing how many of the stories that I do interconnect with each other. The first segment was about the military industrial complex and how it exploits and uses black people disproportionately to maintain uh, uh, global hegemony over the rest of the world and dominion over the world while at the same time treating black people as second class citizens here and now you see the prison industrial complex does exactly the same thing. So this is what I always tell people when they want to look at all these different things to blame and they want to blame, uh, you know, they want to blame, you know, rappers or they want to blame Tyler Perry or whoever. You have to understand that this system this system is this system because it is specifically there for the purpose of exploiting black labor and black communities and black bodies. That's the prison complex. That's the military complex. All of it. That is why Gary has had the issues that it's had, where our own state intervened under uh, Richard Gordon Hatcher to allow white flight to come here and make our, uh, to allow white flight to allow capital flight from our city, broke its own laws to allow the, the town of Merrillville to exist for the sole purpose of capital flight from this town. That is why that happens. So that there will always be desperate people in places like Gary, Indiana, who will either end up in the military industrial complex machine or the prison industrial complex machine. And if you've listened to the show, and, and, and when I do a Veterans Day and Memorial Day uh, segments, 
I sh- I show you the the numbers of veterans who end up end up in both. A lot of our veterans come home maimed from these wars and screwed up from these wars and end up committing crimes and end up in prison. So they got you both ways. Now, according to the Left Business Observer, the federal prison industry produces 100% of all military helmets. War supplies and other equipment. The workers supply 98% of the entire market for equipment assembly services, 93% of paints and paintbrushes, 92% of stove assembly, 46% of body armor, 36% of home appliances, 30% of headphones, microphones, speakers, 21% of office furniture, airplane parts, medical supplies, and much, much more. Prisoners even raise seeing eye dogs for blind people. So here we are. These two things intersect, the prison industrial complex, the military industrial complex. When are you guys going to get mad? That's all I'm wondering. When is enough going to be enough? You know, when is voting red or blue going to be no longer seen as a viable option when it comes to dealing with these is solving these problems because they both again they both exist to, to feed you into that either either one of these machines military industrial complex prison industrial complex some of you get both all right folks we're gonna lighten the mood a little bit you know it ain't it, it World's not totally bad, okay? When we come back, happy happies!